Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to present to you uh, a problem which, to tell you the truth, I was kind of surprised with the result of this problem. Um, that was a long time ago and uh, it kind of counterintuitive if you wish. In any case, it's about electrostatics um, and uh, this particular lecture is about this problem. Um, it's presented as part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unisor.com. Um, now, the whole subject is actually described also in writing uh, as notes for this lecture. So every lecture in this course has very detailed notes and I do suggest you to pay attention to these notes. All these notes are on Unisor.com. Um, the lecture is basically physically uh, as a recording. Um, it's stored on YouTube and there are some description on YouTube as well, but it's a short description. The real lengthy one is uh, on Unisor.com. Um, this course has a prerequisite which is Math for Teens. Uh, you do have to know math and in this particular problem I am using calculus, vector algebra, and stuff like this. So you better brush up on, on your mathematics. And again, the course, which is called Math for Teen, is definitely sufficient to Physics for Teens. Okay, um, yes, and by the way, the site is completely free, so no advertising, no financial strengths. Um, okay, these are um, it's kind of two problems, but it's actually only one real problem. The, the second one is a very trivial one. Here is uh, what it says. Okay, let's consider you have an infinite plane, infinitesimally thin. So it's just the flat surface. Now, obviously you can tell that there are no infinite planes and no infinitesimally thin pl uh, planes, etc. But again, we are talking about a model. Everything, whatever physics do, especially when it comes to a theory like this one, it's all about particular model. So let's just bear with this from the mathematical standpoint. It's a plane, infinitesimally thin, and um, it's charged with electricity. Well, it's infinite plane, right? So the amount of electricity is infinite. However, we do have something which is called a density of distribution of electricity, which means that there is some kind of a parameter, which I call sigma, which is basically uh, coulombs per square meter. That's how it is uh, dimensioned, uh, which means that if you have any area on this plane, if you multiply the area by this sigma, you will get the amount of electricity in coulombs which this particular area contains. Now, what's necessary to do is to find out the characteristics of the electrostatic field around this plane produced by this particular um, distribution of uh, electric charge. Now, in particular, let's just take some kind of a point P above this plane and let's find out the intensity of um, electric field at this particular point um, which this plane defines. So, how can I find out um, this particular intensity? Well, intensity is a vector, right? So, the vector must have first some kind of a direction. Now, for um, consideration of symmetry, this vector is supposed to be on a perpendicular from the point P uh, to the plane. Let's call the plane alpha. So we have this plane, and this is the perpendicular. Now, why is this the case? Well, it's very simple actually to explain why it's supposed to be on the perpendicular. Let's take any small domain here. Well, I didn't choose a point because point has no electricity. But any domain, however small, will have certain non-equal to zero amount of electricity. 
Okay, but let's consider that this particular domain is really very, very small. So from every even smaller part of it, we can say that the vector of intensity is directed exactly on this line. Now, we know that vector of intensity, if you have two point objects, is always directed um, on a line which connects them, because every charged point object has radial uh, directions of, of the intensity vector. If this is a point object, then all the uh, vectors of intensity at any point are always radial. So we know that. Okay, so now we can consider that we have a probe object at, let's say, plus one coulomb here at point P, and we have a very, very small area here. Well, this very, very small area has a certain amount of electricity, which is equal to sigma times the area, right? Now, this is the vector. I can always represent this vector as sum of two vectors. One is radial, and another is perpendicular. Now, let's take the symmetrical relative to this. This is the perpendicular to the plane from the P. Let's call it O. So let's take symmetrical area here. Also the same shape, the same area, just symmetrically positioned relatively to the point um, O. Well, obviously, since the area is exactly the same in size, uh, and uh, because it's symmetry, which means these two um, segments are equal to, as, to, to each other, AO and OB. Now, AP equal to um, BP, for obvious reason, because these are right triangles with a common uh, catheters and the other two catheters equal to each other. So the distance is the same, the charge is the same, so intensity should be the same in magnitude, but how about the direction? Direction will be this, right? Well, I put the arrow in this, uh, in, in this direction, it can be opposite direction, it depends on whether this is uh, positive or negative, but it doesn't really matter. The matter is just the line along which the vector is stretched, all right? And I can also represent this vector as a sum of this one and this one, all right? Now, it's the same magnitude, the same angle, right? Because the triangles are um, congruent, which means that my horizontal components of this uh, of, this, of these two vectors are exactly the same, because what is the horizontal component? It's length times uh, cosine of this angle. So these are oppositely directed and equal in, ma in magnitude, so all horizontal components will cancel each other. Vertical components are the same, and they are along the same direction and the same magnitude. So my point is that all uh, components of all the vectors of intensity from all the points, horizontal components will all nullify each other. Vertical components are always directed towards the same direction and they're all parallel to each other and that's why they will all be summed together. So, that's basically a, a description of, the, this is a qualitative description of the fact that our um, resulting vector must be vertical, uh, uh, perpendicular to the plane. Direction will be either from the plane to the point or point to the plane, depending on whether this charge is positive or negative. If it's negative, it will be attraction, because this is positive. If, uh, if, if this is positive, it will be uh, repelling. Okay. Now, this is kind of an explanation, not much of a mass actually here. Um, so, let's calculate this vertical component, which is the only thing which we are interested, 
from all the elements on this plane uh, and then add them up together. Well, I use the word add, basically it's integration. So we have to choose some kind of a small component, find its vertical, uh, 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 find the vertical component of the um, intensity vector and integrate along the same um, plane. Well, you can do it in many different ways. For instance, you can arrange the Cartesian uh, system of coordinates. This will be some kind of a x, y point. We will make a, 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 uh, an increment dx and dy, have a little square here, and then integrate by x and y from minus infinity to plus infinity by x and from minus infinity to plus infinity by y. Yes, we can do that, but there is a kind of a better, a little bit simpler approach. Um, and here is what I'm suggesting actually to do. Let me just forget about this piece and this piece. We will do it slightly differently. Okay, this is my base of the perpendicular. What I'm going to do right now is I will introduce, instead of Cartesian system of coordinates, I will introduce cylindrical one. Now, this will be the z-axis, okay? And on the plane, I will use the polar system. Let's consider, for instance, this is an x-direction, whatever it is. So, any point here will be characterized by angle, and radius. Now, I will do a little bit even more in this particular case. Instead of using a small element with certain r with uh, an increment dr and certain angle phi with increment d phi, I will use it um, sli slightly differently. I will use a ring here. So the ring will have inner radius r and outer radius r plus differential of r. So it's a very, very thin, infinitely thin ring. So it's very thin here. And obviously the whole plane is very thin as far as, the, um, as, far as thinness in this direction, okay? Infinitely thin. So what I would like to say that it's, it's basically chosen for a purpose, this ring. Why? For a very simple reason. Because if you will take any small piece of it, it will have a um, certain amount of electricity and intensity vector would be directed from this piece toward this point uh, uh, P. Or this direction doesn't really matter. But anyway, it's along this line. So the length of this line is exactly the same for all pieces around this ring, right? Because it's the same radius here or here. So it's all right triangles with the common uh, catheters, which is the distance from R to O. And the second catheters is the lowercase r. So all these pieces will have exactly the same distance and the same angle here, which means that if they are all of the same area, infinitesimally small area, then the vertical component of the intensity vector will be exactly the same for, for all of these points. So when I will integrate them around the whole circle, uh, the whole ring actually, they will, they will be basically be, be very simple re result of this integration. I just have to take the whole area of this ring, multiply by sigma, which is the density of the electricity, to get the amount of electricity. And knowing amount of electricity, I will just uh, use this formula for intensity
which we have learned before. So Q would be the amount of electricity here. R would be the uh, distance from any point on this ring to this point uh, P. K is Coulomb's constant. And since the angle is exactly the same for all of them, I'll just have to multiply it by by what? By sine of this angle, right? To get the vertical component. Okay, so how can we do it? Now, this is actually a very simple thing. So the area of the ring is, the area of the ring is, well, I have to take the area of a um, circle surrounded by um, r plus dr radius and subtract the area of a circle of the r radius, right? So it's pi r plus dr square minus pi r square, which is equal to pi r square plus 2 pi r dr plus dr pi dr square and minus pi r square. Now pi r square goes out. Now look at this. This is an infinitesimal infinitesimal um, variable of a higher order than this one. You see this is dr and this is dr square. And as we know from mathematics whenever we will integrate this will be a component which, which will be integrated, and this will add an infinitesimal part to the integration because we are integrating only once. So I can definitely get rid of this as well and say that my um, ring area is area of the ring is 2 pi r times dr, which is kind of obvious because 2 pi r is a circumference and dr is the uh, thickness of this ring and if dr is infinitesimally small then the the fact that it's curved instead of stretched doesn't really matter in in the difference will be infinitesimals of higher order so i have the area if i have the area i have the amount of electricity by multiplying by q so my differential Q at the radius R. Now why I'm using differential? Well, because the whole thing is infinitesimally small. It's a differential only for this ring. It's 2 pi uh, sigma R dr. Okay, now what's the distance from P to any point A um, on this ring. Well, let's just uh, take the distance from P to the uh, plane um, alpha as, as H and then my R would be equal to the radius square, R square would be equal to radius square plus H square, right? This is the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I've got that. And so my d e of r equals 2. This is my intensity according to this formula. It's the k times k times 2 pi k sigma uh, r dr divided by square root distance which is r square plus ih square. Right? Now, now I would like to know not just the intensity but a vertical component of the intensity because the horizontal components will all be cancelling, cancelling each other. However, only the vertical components will be uh, calculated and they're all in the same direction so I can just add them up so instead of instead of vector addition because these are all vectors differently directed I can't really add them up but if I will represent each vector as sum of horizontal and vertical component all horizontal will be wiping out each other but the vertical components will be adding to each other 
Okay, so I have to multiply it by sine of this angle, right? Sine of PAO. So my vertical component, which I will use EZ as a, as a suffix Z, it's, a yeah, it, it's along the Z coordinate, as a function of R, it would be equal to 2 pi k sigma r dr divided by r square plus h square. And I have to multiply by sine of this angle. What is the sine of this angle? It's h divided by the length. Now we know this length. It's this one. Well, actually, it's square root of this one. So I have to multiply it by h divided by square root of r square plus h square. Okay, let me write it down slightly differently. Uh, 2 pi k sigma, these are all constants, right? h is also constant. What's not constant is r dr, r, dr I will put at the end, and this one is r square plus h square to the power of minus 3 second times dr. Right? Square root is power of 1 half. This is power of 1. So it's 1 and 1 half would be 3 seconds. And minus because it's in the denominator and I will not use the, um, the denominator here. I will, everything will be in numerator. So this is my final amount of vertical uh, of intensity vector magnitude of vertical component of intensity vector of one ring. So the whole ring contributes that much to the magnitude of the entire uh, intensity of the plane. Now what I have to do is I have to integrate it for all the rings obviously concentric to each other so which means I have to integrate it from 0 to intensity by R right so it would be 2 pi K Sigma H and what I have here is R times R squared plus H squared to the power of minus 3 second dr. So this is basically the answer. This is the magnitude of the entire vector uh, produced, entire intensity vector produced by the plane. Okay, so let's concentrate on doing something about this integral. Now it's, as we are saying, it's a pure technicality. That's why you have to know math before actually attempting any kind of a serious uh, calculations in physics. So, um, let me do it in two steps. I can do it in one step, but I can really prefer to do it in two steps. You see, I don't like that this is r squared plus h squared. I prefer to have something like 1 plus x squared to some power, which is more... Um, palatable from the integration standpoint. So what I will do is I will introduce a new variable called um, R divided by H. Now what happens here now is my R would be equal to XH. So my integral if R is from 0 to infinity X also will be from 0 to, to, to infinity. Now my dr is equal to, obviously, um, uh, h dx, right? I'm just differentiating. x is a variable, h is a constant. So differentiating just um, multiplier will be outside. Okay, in terms of um, uh, x, the whole thing would look like this. It would be integral also from 0 to infinity by x now. 
and I have this unpleasant multiplier in front of it, which is 2 pi k sigma h. Now, instead, I will put here r is xh, and here I will have x squared h squared plus h squared to the power of minus 3 second, right? I replaced r with xh, and dr would be h dx, right? Now, that's equal to, obviously, h squared would be outside, so it's 2 pi k uh, sigma h integral 0 to infinity xh. Now, it would be h squared times x squared plus 1, and all of this in the power of minus 3 second right? dx. No, h, one more h, sorry. Well, I can put h squared here. Or h squared here. Actually, I can put h cube. Okay, I put all h's together. Now, equals to dx, equals to 2 pi k sigma h cube integral from 0 to infinity x times so h square times minus uh, to the power of minus 3 second would be what? h to the power of 2 times minus 3 second, right? powers are multiplied n times x square plus 1 minus 3 second dx. Now, what is 2 times minus 3 second would be minus 3. And this is the plus 3, which means and this is something which is, again, for me, was absolutely remarkable. Look at this again. There is no h anymore. So integral from 0 to infinity, x, x squared plus 1, minus 3 second, dx. There is no h here. So this is something which I think is the whole purpose of this lecture. What does it mean that there is no h in this formula? It means that uh, the intensity of the field does not depend on the distance of the point to the plane. So no matter how far from the plane you are, intensity of the electric uh, field will be exactly the same. This is a remarkable stuff. I mean, intensity, you, you intuitively you feel that the further you are from the source of electricity, the weaker should be the field. So the forces should be weaker. But in this particular case, it looks like no matter how far we are from this infinite plane, the intensity of the force will be exactly the same. Well, why? Because it's, it's an infinite plane. You see, it's infinite, and all these infinite tails on all the sides are combining together, are making um, this uh, uh, intensity independent of the height. No matter how high you are above the, above the plane, it will still reach you with the same strengths. Strange, but the fact is the fact. Now, how can we find out what this particular integral x, uh, x uh, uh, relative to x is? Well, that's kind of simple. Um, now, the best thing is to say that um, we will have uh, y is equal to x squared, right? What does it mean? We have 2 x dx would be dy, right? dy equals to 2x dx. So the whole thing is equal to 2 pi k sigma. Now, x is from 0 to infinity, and that's why y will also be from 0 to infinity. Now, we are using this 2 already. 
2 and x so we will have uh, y square plus 1 to the power of minus 3 seconds dy no I'm sorry not y square plus 1 y plus 1 x square is y 2x dx is dy right so I have this now let me make it a little simpler I will put x plus uh, x minus 1 right then a plus one second y is equal x squared plus 1 plus 1 dy will be exactly the same thing uh, but now instead of y plus 1 I will have y here but now integration should be not from 0 to infinity but from 1 to infinity right if, is, is, if x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. If x goes to infinity, y go, goes to infinity. Now, 2x dx is my dy, and x square, square plus 1 is just y. Now, this is just a plain uh, power function, and uh, we can very easily integrate it. So, what's the integral of this? You can wipe out this. Now, um, you know that y uh, to the power of n uh, derivative is uh, n y to the power n minus 1, right? You know that. That's the derivative from the power function. So if I will um, integrate uh, indefinite integral of y to the power of um, minus 1 uh, dy it will be equal to y to the n divided by n right well plus constant which we don't really care about because we are talking about definite integrals all right so my n minus 1 is minus 3 second so n is equal to minus 3 second plus 1 which is minus 1 second 1 second so, this integral is equal to pi k sigma. So, indefinite integral would be equal to y to the power of minus 1 second divided by minus 1 second, right? According to this. n is equal to minus 1 second. Okay. And now what should I do with this? I should really put it in limits from 1 to infinity. Okay, first we go to the... Well, let me just write it a little bit differently. Divided by minus 1 half is minus 2 pi k sigma and 1 over square root of y, right? If you don't mind. Now, if you substitute infinity obviously will have zero so this is equal to zero minus and now you substitute one here so minus and minus would be plus square root of one is one and this would be just plain two pi k sigma so this is the intensity of the vector of uh, electric field, uh, electrostatic uh, field produced by infinite plane, where sigma is density of electricity, uh, which signifies how much electricity every unit of area will, will, will have. Well, this is the end of the first part of this, uh, which basically is 99% of the whole lecture. And another 1% is the question, how much work do we need to move uh, uh, any charge from one place above this uh, plane to another? 
Well, that's obviously a very simple thing to do. Um, look, we do have, if this is a plane, and I have two points, P1 and P2, and I have to um, take some kind of a uh, charge Q from this place to this place. Now, obviously I know this sigma is a density. Now, look, if this is projections onto this plane. Now, the intensity is exactly the same here and there. And it's all directed vertically. Which means that my horizontal movement parallel to the plane needs no energy. And the only energy I need when I'm acting when I'm moving against or along the um, vector of intensity, since all vectors of intensity are directed vertically, and uh, uh, so the horizontal is perpendicular to the force, perpendicular to the force requires no work, right? So only when I'm going along the force, with the force or against the force, I have to spend energy, I have to, my, my work will be positive or negative depending on the direction. So it's very simply. So first I move this horizontally to, to be on the same vertical, and then I'm moving along the vertical from whatever the height h1 to height h2, and my force is constant because as we have seen it does not depend on the h, so it's just the movement with a constant force, which is this one, from point which has height h1 to, to, to height h2, which means my work would be the force times the distance, right? So the work would be equal to the force, which is 2 pi k sigma, na, uh, by difference h2 minus h1. <coughs> now, Obviously, there is one more little thing about the direction of this force. We were just talking about magnitude. Direction depends, obviously, on what kind of charges, uh, what kind of a charge Q is, and what kind of a charge is in the plane. If they are of the same, then if H2 is greater than H1, it would be repelling, so it will be one sign, sign of, uh, of work, it will be uh, positive and negative, would be another sign. So it, it all depends. So let's not uh, talk about signs. Signs is easy, but the magnitude of the work is this one. And that basically completes this particular lecture. This is, as I was saying, 1% of the whole thing. Okay, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They are maybe in a little bit more detail than whatever I was just talking. Um, and it's just a good reading anyway. It's like a textbook, as was probably every other lecture. So that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.